What's your name and where did you come from? Mm -hmm. Very well. You may begin reading from any place. You see, this is how you should do it. The thing is that this is a test to see how you should do worry. What you can do and what you cannot to determine your specific problems so you could maybe it's because of our presence what do you mean because of your presence is it because of the whole life presence should we all leave now all the problems are hers she needs to discover her problems to understand and then fix them don't worry little one i'm warning you in advance you will face a lot of difficulties in your educational program. You can do it. Okay, okay. So get yourself ready to follow every my horrifying, in your opinion, task. You can cry, whimper, whine, but do it. Hadyusha, what are you crying for? Just read. It's okay, continue. What are you crying for? Just read. It's okay, it's normal. Some people may see themselves as sick individuals with a big problem, or they may be shy and so on. There will be a lot of various difficult tasks. Mm -hmm, that's enough. Now, tell back what you've just read about without looking. Let's see what's left in your memory. Mm -hmm. It appears that you have a good memory. You are rushing when you're speaking, but this is typical to most people who stutter. What are your the most difficult sounds to pronounce? So you have never determined any difficult sounds, words. How do you characterize your speech problem? What is the reason for you to be nervous? Mm -hmm. Are you nervous because of your speech? Yeah. Is this the main reason for you to be nervous? Yeah. When you are nervous not because of your speech, do you stutter? Yeah. Ah, so it is still related to speech. You are nervous about how would you be able to say it. Yes, so it appears so. It appears that you are always nervous only because of your speech. Okay, very well. Let's now read a little more here. Духан, небольшой трактир, ресторан на Кавказе. Духанчик, содержатель Духана. Хорошо, давай так, да? 
Okay, let's conduct an experiment. You will slow down your reading. Read slower and let's see if you will make less mistakes. Begin reading. Okay, see, you stumbled even though you slowed down. Read more. Духовник чей или кого? Священник, который постоянно принимает испевать исповедь у кого-нибудь. Three words, three stumbles. This is tough. And that was while you slowed down your reading, right? Did you slow yourself down? And you still stumbled, right? Let's slow down even more to see if your excessive rate of speech is really a problem. Or maybe you are performing some other incorrect actions when you are speaking. Let's slow down even more. See, you still are making mistakes. You move your tongue incorrectly for some sounds. You grope where to put it like a blind man, right? No? You are not groping some sounds? Okay, let's do it one more time. Right now, this d d d what is it? You think it is not groping over sound? So it sounds like with your tongue. You work indistinctly with your tongue. It quivers like a blind person is groping the road. Let's do it one more time. Right? This is what we see, and you are not in a hurry right now. So I got it right. No matter whether you do it fast or slowly, the fact is that you make your sound positions blindly. Your actions are uncertain. And this is where the quivering of your tongue comes from. It indicates that they never taught you to form sound positions when you were a child. Can you ever be sure that you will say a sound distinctly? Here we go. This is the reason. You do not have a certainty. You quiver like a blind person stepping on an unknown road because you don't understand what you're doing. Okay, let's test your knowledge now of sounds. Point with your finger to every sound in this word. What's the first sound? Next. Wrong, there is no ha sound. There is no ve sound. There is no ye sound. There is no N sound. There is no S sound. You named most of the sounds incorrectly. Here is the fact. They never taught you to differentiate sounds from letters. I may be mistaken. Let's do it one more time. Name sounds, not letters, in this word. Wrong. 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 So you named about 30% of sounds in this word incorrectly. So she looks at the letter, but she has no idea how to sound it out. You cannot read like this. She produces sounds incorrectly. We never even knew that this should be taught. You didn't know. 
No one in the world knows that. However, this information must be taught. He needs to know precisely the difference between sounds and letters. Right now, slowly, letter by letter, we see what's going on in her head. See, right now, you saw it. She looked at the letter and labeled the name of the letter instead of a sound. We cannot speak like this, but this is how her brain works. And not because there is something wrong with her brain. Her brain is perfectly fine. She has a very good memory. The problem is that her memory is filled with this incorrect information. Here, what are the sounds in this word? Wrong. 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 See, this is her problem. This is not a neurological disorder. Her problem is, how old are you? My seven-year-old child pronounces and reads sounds much better than she does at 20. She lacks confidence in speech, not because she is sick neurologically, but because you see now what she has been doing. You know, honestly, if you ask me to do this, I'm not sure if I can name sounds correctly myself. Okay, let's see if you can do it. That wasn't bad. You did make one mistake, though, sounding out a part of the word instead of naming sounds separately. But at least you did not substitute sounds with letter names. See, once again, that was pretty good, although you did make one mistake. You labeled a voiceless sound t as t, but you know, that's not a big deal. But it is ridiculous when a person says the names of the letters instead of sounds. Unlike she, you have a basic understanding of what sounds and letters are. And this is why you were able to complete this task with about 90% accuracy. That was pretty good. You did it as normal person. She tested as abnormal person. Didn't they teach you this in school? They may have taught her in school, but she could have been sick at that time, absent, or simply haven't learned it somehow. Or the teacher was not on top of this. But most likely they simply told her that she was neurologically ill and had a problem. Up until the first grade, her speech was totally fine. Did you teach her to read before the first grade? Yes, of course, we did teach her. Not professionally, like in home style. Home style. That could have triggered her problem, because she still speaks according to that home style. Yeah, that could have been my mistake. Now we will correct your mistake so she could erase that homestyle information from her memory and finally learn the correct information about the difference between sounds and letters. Isn't it because of her fears? Yes, she's afraid of words. When she sees a word, she doesn't know what to do with it. This is the same if they put you behind the helicopter's wheel and asked you, fly. You would be fearful because you don't know what to do with it. Well, we thought that this comes naturally on its own somehow. The knowledge of speech can never come on its own. Would you learn a foreign language if you just waited for several years until it comes on its own? No, but why is it that my son doesn't stutter and is not afraid of words? I taught them both the same way. It all depends on what is left in one's memory 
after education. Some people tend to copy good things and others tend to learn and remember bad things. Some people remember wrong actions and misbehave. Others remember correct actions and live their lives successfully. We simply observe what a person does incorrectly. What do we need to do if a person does not know how to do it correctly? Teach him. Yes, if a person doesn't show confidence in his actions, we simply need to teach him again. Yes, she simply lacks confidence. She simply lacks confidence because she simply doesn't know. You are confident when you know. When you don't know, you are not sure how to proceed. When a person does know how to proceed, he simply goes forward. When he doesn't know how to proceed, he does not go forward or does move forward with a lot of fears, uncertainty and lots of mistakes. Now describe what you see on TV. You can hear how she says N, N. Why N? There is no sound N in this word, Narisovana. When you speak, do you visualize letters? See in your mind the way you write them. No, you don't visualize letters. So what you are saying that you hear N and you think that you have to say N, right? What do you mean you just speak? What do you pay attention to when you speak? Meaning? Yeah. Every word labels meaning. It points to an object, for example. It is a meaning itself. There is nothing to think about here. A cat is what? A cat. The word dog labels a dog. What would you like to think about here? So there is nothing to think about in speech. I just would like to clarify what is it that you are thinking about when you speak because it is very important. The way it is what? How you envision your words? The way you want to say it, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to say it in sounds that you just demonstrated here, right? Or you have several options to say this. No? You don't have several options to say it? Ah, okay, very well. Now, how will you pronounce in sounds the word, for example, колесо? If you speed it up, what will come up? No. You did say the word correctly, but the sounds that you pronounced before saying this word. Yes, so you pronounced incorrectly several sounds, and then you just recalled the word in the way you heard it, how others say it, and then you simply copied it correctly. Now, pronouncing sounds the word revolution. You labeled letters. So did you see these letters in your mind when you were naming them? This is what I am asking you about. I see 
that you are speaking in letters. For example, in the word revolution, you attempted to say or instead of a. Your child is attempting to speak in letters, and she doesn't understand what sounds are and what's the difference between letters and sounds. This is why she has difficulties. Because we write letters with our hand, and we write totally differently from the way we speak. Name sounds in the simple word Karova. Again, see, instead of saying sounds K, R, R, you sounded out the names of the letters K, R, V. You made several mistakes again. And because you keep making such mistakes all the time, when you speed it up, you produce your speech indistinctly. So your inadvertent mistakes make your speech sloppy. But this is easy to fix. It is like if you made a spelling mistake in your dictation in the school and wrote a word according to the way you heard it instead of letters. Your teacher would cross it out, give you a bad score, force you to retake your spelling test several times, but no one would ever claim that you were sick and that was something wrong with your head. It's obvious, a child hasn't learned it yet. This is your problem that you have been suffering from. So all you need to do is to study and understand clearly what writing and speaking actions are, what the difference between them is, and learn precisely what you need to do to produce these actions. Every mouth movement is standard and must be learned precisely. This is why you would have to relearn a lot of words in a new way, in sounds, not letters. You would have to relearn your entire speech. Are you ready for this? That's it. You can cry, be capricious, because this does not really affect the quality of speech. So if you are nervous or have any other feelings, just ignore them. Do what I ask you to do. If you want to cry, cry, but perform precisely every task, then you will have a precise outcome. Speech doesn't depend on our feelings. It's like pushing a shopping cart. As long as you will be pushing it, it will be moving. And it doesn't matter what feelings you have at this moment, whether you're nervous or not. What is important is whether you're doing it or not, and whether you're doing it correctly or not. If you do it incorrectly, you immediately get incorrect result. But if you perform your action correctly, you will see correct result instantly. During these three days, your goal is to learn correct sounds, to recognize and name them correctly in words in any situations. No matter whether you are nervous, want to cry or not, people get excited, nervous, angry, but they never confuse letters with sounds. They produce words in precise, standard sounds only. Whether they cry, laugh, argue, they always produce their sounds distinctly. You know, while scolding at someone, nothing comes to my head, and I cannot make a sentence correctly. Yeah, this is different. This happens because you simply cannot find words. You don't know what to say, and not because you cannot say the word. In order to say a word, we need to know it. Good speech requires strong vocabulary. But in some situations, people cannot find the right word and switch to some filthy language, which comes to their head first. But if you do not use this kind of language, then you cannot say anything and remain silent. Okay, so we have determined her exact problem, which is very typical for most people who stutter. The majority of them are confused 
about speaking and writing. They do not understand the difference between them. Some of them are more confused than others. In addition, we will test the function of her attention and memory, because we speak from memory, and it is very important to have a strong vocabulary in our auditory memory. And your goal is to learn to never confuse sounds and letters. In the beginning, it may not be that easy, but you will need simply to be more diligent in your learning efforts. So it's clear now, right? Okay, what's your name? What problem did you have? Проблемы заикания. У меня неправильно были поставлена речь. Я плохо знала звуки. Все время повторялась. И перед некоторыми словами говорила звук Э. Хорошо. Very well. Which day are we working today? Третий день. How are you feeling today? Чувствую я себя хорошо. Намного лучше, чем когда я пришла сюда. Речь моя стала более ровной, спокойной. Я стараюсь держать себя, следить за своей речью, за своей памятью, за своим голосом. Стараюсь мыслить более медленно well done correctly so how many years were you stuttering twelve years so where did you attempt to cure your stuttering к неврологу, которая мне дала лекарства, что если я куда-либо выхожу, то я должна их пить. Some tranquilizer. Лекарство называется Xanax. Оно мне вообще не помогло, но с речью у меня были такие же проблемы. Речь моя не успокаивалась. Я говорила со ступором. Mm-hmm. Where was your stupor? Precisely. Can any med change anything there? No, it cannot. Can it build your vocabulary? No medication can help with that. Okay. What kind of fears did you used to have? Может быть, был страх говорить много или говорить в незнакомой компании. Loudly. Громко говорить. Перед тем, как что-либо сказать, я пыталась придумать фразы сразу, а не так, как сейчас. Говорить все с дополнением, с догрузом. So you have determined a lot of mistakes in your memory, behavior, and you fixed these mistakes. How are you feeling now? Remember your worries, doubts on the first day, and seeing a neurologically ill person in yourself, and your emotions. Yeah. You cried. Do you realize now? Yeah, it was kind of stupid. Because you probably expected that someone will treat you medically here, will do something with you. In reality, everything was like in the first grade, your teacher pointed to your mistakes and you fixed them on your own. And the way you fixed your mistakes determined your result. So how do you like your result? I hope you do not betray yourself 
do not allow your mistakes back to your speech. Hope you will always continue speaking in the way I taught you. Okay, let's do some reading now. Yes, the dictionary. Знакомство. Знакомый. Знаменатель. Знаменательный. Знамение. Знаменитость. Знаменитый. Знаменовать. Знаменосец. Знаменщик. Знамя. Знание. Знатность. Знатный. Знаток. Знать. Знаться. Знахарство. Знахарь. Turn the page. Read. Надо. Надобно. Надобность. Надобный. Надоедливый. Надоесть. Надоить. Надой. Надолго. Надолго. Надомник. Надоровать. Надороваться. Надоомить. Надпил. Надпилить. Наживо. Наживить. Наживка. Наживной. Нажигать. Нажим. Нажимать. Нажим. The same task, but from the memory. Нажимать. Нажим. Нажинать. Нажить. Нажиться. На завтра. Назад. Назади. Названивать. Название. Названный. Turn the page. Отсев. Отсевки. Отсек. Отсель. Отселить. Отсесть. Отсечный. Отсечь. Отсеять. Отсеяться. Отсидеть. Отсидеться. Отскакать. Осколбить. Осколбиться. Отскочить. Отклести. Отслоение. Отслоить. Ослоиться. Ослужить. Отсоветовать. Turn the page. Поселок. Поселять. Поселяться. Посреди. Посередине. Посередке. Посереть. Посетите. Посетить. Посетовать. Посечься. Посещаемость. Посеять. Посидеть. Посиделки. Turn the page. Продать. Продаться. Продвинуть. Продвинуться. Продекламировать. Проделать. Проделка. Продемонстрировать. Продержать. Продержаться. Продернуть. Продеть. Продешевить. Продиктовать. Продирать. Продлить. Продлиться. 
про налог, продовольствие, продолбить, продолговатый, продолжать, продолжать, продолжать. Good. Now read the book. Страх порождает сопротивление. Из-за сопротивления вы становитесь отдельной индивидуальностью. Конечно, когда вы становитесь индивидуальностью, вы испытываете тревогу. Тогда эту огромную жизнь вы принимаете как врага. В этом состоит западный подход. Вся природа – ваш враг. Она должна быть покорена. Покорение природы – как раз то, чем занимается наука в течение двух или трех столетий. И она разрушает красоту жизни. Вся экология Земли разрушена из-за тех людей, которые стараются победить. Это глупо, это так. Как если бы одна моя рука пыталась победить все мое тело. Это также глупо. Человек, старающий покорить землю, покорить небо, покорить природу. Это просто абсурдно. Если вы стараетесь покорить природу, вы в тот или иной день будете пытаться победить также и свою внутреннюю сокровенную природу. Это логичное следствие, вполне естественный результат. Сначала вы стараетесь покорить внешнюю природу, потом стремитесь покорить внутреннюю. Но тогда вы всегда пребываете в конфликте, в столкновении. Вы становитесь чрезвычайно эгоистичным и, конечно, ужасно страдающим, чудовищно страдающим, бесконечно страдающим. Страдание – это когда вы идете немного с существованием, Счастье – попасть в ногу, а идти в ногу с существованием так просто, потому что это естественно. Okay. Now tell back what you've read about. В этом отрывке говорилось о том, о том, что человек не должен сопротивляться своей природе. Он не должен противиться ей. Если он будет противиться ей, получается... Он противится самим собой. Также, если он будет противиться, если он будет подавлять свою внешнюю и внутреннюю природу, он будет глубоко несчастен, огорчен и будет из-за этого страдать. So not bad at all for three days, right? Very good. That's what I'm talking about. This is why I always film before and after, so people could see what work has been done here in three days. Okay, so we have taught you to read, to speak, so describe what you see on the TV. I и явно ругается на кого-то. Он, скорее всего, диктор. У него на правом ухе наушник, и снизу на костюме у него зацеплен микрофон. Слева мужчина лысый в очках. Он тоже, видимо, дает интервью, или он корреспондент, так как у него на пиджаке Микрофон. Сейчас показывают мужчину, он сидит в своем офисе, в синей рубашке. Мужчине явно лет за 50 и больше. У него седые волосы и седые усы. Скорее всего, это программа «Время», так как диктор что-то очень... Возбужденно рассказывает. 
описывает. Женщина в коричневом платье изображена на левой стороне экрана с бусами. Она тоже сидит и слушает и участвует в их обсуждении. Сейчас на картинке я видела женщину, которая была вся в крови, потом мужчину. Он тоже был весь. So how easy it is to do TV commentary? Да, намного. Of course, you have been practicing for three days, and now you understand how to speak in the way of additional loading of information, speaking sequentially and calling things with their names. This is another skill you have learned, and you do it pretty well. Good job. Now tell something from your memory about elephants. Громадные уши и длинный нос. Его называют хобот. Также у слонов бывают бивни. Слоны с бивнями, они очень редки и ценны. Их бивни очень ценны. В основном они обитают на востоке, в Африке. На востоке в Индии, в Таиланде, в Камбодже и в других таких странах. Они их используют как транспорт, они на них ездят и проводят разные мероприятия, такие как свадьба. Также слонов можно увидеть в зоопарке в любой стране мира или в цирке. Часто бывают представления в цирке со слонами. Они очень послушные, милые животные, которые исполняют практически все команды своего дрессировщика. На них одевают шапочки, иногда даже юбочки. Их учат танцевать. Шевелить музыку хоботом, ушами, поливать из хобота цветы или своего бессеровщика. Также есть много фильмов со слонами. В одном из них снимался Роберт Паттисон. Рис Вузеспун. Слон там была очень непослушной и довольно старый. Но ему, главному герою, удалось ее укротить, так как он был поляком, он знал польский. И, видимо, до этого слона учили только на польском. И когда он сказал ей команду сядь, она села. Встать, она встала. И после этого именно шоу с этим слоном было настолько успешно. И оно принесло доход. Много людей приезжали или приходили в цирк, чтобы увидеть только это представление. Okay, very, very good. You can speak from your memory now. Well done, good job. Tell about outer space now. Космос еще не до конца изучен. Он большой, бескрайний. Человечество смогло только наполовину изучить нашу галактику. Всего в нашей Солнечной системе 13 планет. Земля третья по счету от Солнца. Она находится на самом удачном положении. Не так далеко, если бы она была второй планетой по счету, 
то мы не смогли бы тут жить. Так было бы очень жарко. А если мы бы стояли четвертыми, то было бы очень холодно. Земля имеет свой спутник Луну. В космосе также летают кометы разные. Разные звезды. Звезд в нашей Солнечной системе невозможно сосчитать. Их очень много. И с каждым годом, с каждым днем, месяцем каждая звезда то падает, то возрождается. Well done, very good. So now you can talk to your mom, ask her questions, and your mom is going to ask you questions, and you'll see whose speech is better, because right now I don't even know who speaks better. Как дела у тебя проходят на работе? На работе у меня все хорошо. Тебе нравится твоя работа? Да, очень нравится. Как ты думаешь, сколько мы еще будем в Грузии? Наверное, до осени. До осени? Да. А потом куда мы поедем? А куда? Пошлю по...